Good morning and welcome to Supplee Church Online this fine Sunday morning, August 30th, 2020. Our morning announcements. We are happy to announce that you can now shop on Amazon and Amazon Smile Foundation will donate 0.5% of the purchase price of eligible products to Supplee. Amazon Smile is a website operated by Amazon with the same products, prices, and shopping features as Amazon.com, including your Prime membership. The difference is that when you shop on Amazon Smile, Supply will receive a donation. Every item available for purchase on www.amazon.com is also available on Amazon Smile. For more information on how to get set up for Amazon Smile, please check your email or call the church office. Please join our adult education series on the Psalms on Zoom at 10.45 a.m. each Sunday during the summer. Chuck Warmington, Russ Hensel, and Jay Eibner are taking turns leading discussions of a different Psalm each week. The class also provides a chance for some social interaction during this time of isolation. Contact the church office or any of the class leaders for more information and the Zoom link. Pastor Don continues to offer his weekly group prayer meeting via Zoom every Monday at 11 a.m. Please call the church office if you need the login information. Supply so has two new emails as a way to communicate with you. For all prayer requests, please email prayers at suppliepc.org. To give us feedback on our different worship services, please email Feedback at suppleepc.org. Upper Room Booklets for September and October are now available in the church office. If you'd like one, stop by with a mask and pick one up. Cost is $1. Our last announcement. Supplee will continue with our Monday Fellowship in the Field events in September, weather permitting. The next date will be September 14th at 7 p.m., weather permitting. Dr. Erica Harris, who is an ER physician at Einstein Hospital, will be the speaker. Bring your lawn chairs and masks and join us for a time of discussion, prayer, and listening. Our call to worship this morning. This is a day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as we worship God together.
Good morning. We have uh, some lessons for children today, and sometimes children that uh, benefit from the lesson are over 15 or 16. Sometimes they're over 60. But today you'll notice that I have a microphone on, and that microphone helps my voice to be able to project throughout the room. If I didn't wear the microphone, the projection would probably not be as good. You might still be able to hear me, but not as well. Jesus was along the Sea of Galilee, and he was about ready to call disciples to himself, and we're told that he got into Peter's boat. And one of the things that he realized is that there were a lot of people, and in order for his voice to project, he got into the boat and used the Sea of Galilee as his means of having a microphone. Well, you know, you are like that microphone, and so am I in terms of the way that we respond to others. If we're very quiet about our faith, if we're the kind of person that doesn't want anybody else to know what we believe and why we believe it, then we're not going to turn on the microphone because we're going to depend on ourselves rather than the Lord. But if you're the kind of person that says, you know, I'd, I'd like others to see Christ in me, and I'm going to turn on the microphone of my life to be able to share God's love with others, then you're going to have a great impact, just like Jesus did when he was calling those on the day they stood by the Sea of Galilee and the fishermen put down their nets and followed him. Maybe there's someone in your life that needs a little attention, needs a, a little bit of love from you, and it would be great if you would act like a microphone for the Lord this week, especially as we go through these transitions that are taking place in the schools around us. Amen. If you would like to donate to Supply Church, you can visit our website, scan the QR code above with your smartphone, or send us a check in the mail to the address listed. Thank you. Our scripture reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 19. I will be reading from the New Living Translation Bible. Yet true religion and contentment is great wealth. After all, we didn't bring anything with us when we came into the world, and we certainly cannot carry anything out with us when we die. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires. They plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is at the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, Timothy, belong to God. So one, run from all these evil things and follow what is right and good. Pursue a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for what we believe. Hold tightly to the eternal life that God has given you, which you have confessed so well before many witnesses. And I command you before God who gives life to all and before Christ Jesus who gives a good testimony before Pontius Pilate that you obey his commands with all purity, that no one can find fault with you from now until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. For at the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only Almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He alone can never die, and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him. No one has ever seen him, nor ever will. To him be honor and power forever. Amen. Tell those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone. But their trust should be in the living God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and should generously give to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they might take hold of real life. Let's pray together before we look at God's word. Gracious and ever-present God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to meet together freely 
whether it be in the sanctuary or outside the sanctuary. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we look at this important text together today, that we'll be able to glean from it some things that will be helpful for us so that we might live as that microphone and project the love of Christ to others throughout the week ahead. Amen. In Westerly, Rhode Island, a friend of mine used to live there and there was something really interesting near his home. It was a big carousel. And the carousel was such that the children could get on the horses and literally lean off the horse. And as the carousel went around, they would be able to try and grasp the brass ring that was hanging on the outside of the carousel. And sometimes they could do it and sometimes they couldn't. But if they were able to grasp the brass ring, then they could turn it in for a prize after the ride was over. Wouldn't you say that many of us find ourselves searching, so to speak, for a, a brass ring in life. Maybe it comes in a different shape and a different form than the one that I described at the carousel in Rhode Island. But the fact of the matter is, more often than not, we find that when we get that grasp on the brass ring of life, it's not always what we thought it would be. And sometimes we find that it's fleeting and it isn't living up to what we thought would be the case with the brass ring. We find out that it's pretty elusive. At the close of our scripture lesson today, Paul sums up his answer for trying to search for the brass ring. And so I'd like you to pay attention to that whole idea of what it is that you are searching for and how God can help you in that process. Paul says in verse 19, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that many may take hold of life that is truly life. Take hold of life that is truly life. When I hear that, that sounds pretty good. That sounds great to me, taking hold of life and feeling a sense of purpose and feeling a sense that you are included. Often we determine that when we're trying to get a grasp on life that it depends on us. So we think to ourselves that if we do this or if we just do that, if we invest in this, or if we spend our time at that, that it will bring about a guarantee of happiness. Not necessarily so. And that sense of happiness that we have by searching for this and searching for that, instant gratification, if you will, often finds us less connected to the Lord than we should have been. In these days of the virus, people, as you realize, are under great stress, great pressures, great pressure, tyrannized by fear. And sometimes we get confused. We get confused because we don't get what we want, but we get what we don't want. Strained relationships in our world today. And we find that there's nations in conflict, continuing problems in the inner city of our nation, and a great collapse seems to be taking place. And sometimes when all of these things are happening around us, we get to the point of saying, you know, enough, I'm just going to pull away. I think I'll spend my time just watching TV, or I'll spend my time maybe drinking more than I should, or I'll spend my time just coasting and, and burning out, but I'm not going to get involved. I'm just going to stay away. In a survey conducted by USA Today a magazine, people were asked this question, and it's a, a pertinent question. They said, what do you want most of all in life? And the answer predominantly was peace of mind. Most of us want peace of mind. They weren't looking for some sterile serenity, but rather they were looking for a feeling of accomplishment, a feeling of purpose, a life with meaning. And they wanted to be able to experience that. And so our passage for today says, well, you can take hold of that. And you can do that as you depend on the Lord. Do you ever feel that way? You see, Paul was trying to give a personal word through Timothy to the church. And the word that he gave then is just important to us as the church today. And so to those of us who long for an understanding of the rapid changes in our world, 
to those who need some direction in life because they don't know where they're going, to those who would like to experience more of what the Apostle Paul was talking about by taking hold of life and feeling a sense of control, well, these words are just as valid today as they were in the time of Timothy and Paul. And so what Paul tells us in this message today is that there are two things that are necessary if you want to get a hold on life a hold on life that is meaningful. And so Paul says, look for these two things. Put your faith and your hope in God through Jesus Christ. That's number one. Put your faith and your hope in God through Jesus Christ. And number two, help yourself by helping others. Life, meaningful life, starts with God. It is not about possessions. It's about, not about what we have. Whether we have a, a new car or an old car, it is not about temporal things. And none of those things will be able to take us to our final destination. Life in Christ is what it's all about. And it starts when we trust God in Christ. Now, trust. Trust has many parts to it. And one of the parts that belongs to trust is the idea of belief. We just did that a few minutes ago when we shared the Apostles' Creed together and we talked about how the fact that God is good to us, God is gracious to us throughout the generations. The trust in God is to believe that Jesus is who he claimed to be, not just somebody else's Savior, not just the world's Savior, but your Savior and mine. Trust in God means depending on God. Life is often difficult. If someone told you or tells you that life is going to be easy, you'll never have a difficulty, you'll never have a pain in life. I hate to tell you this, but they have been telling you a lie. Because life is painful. Life is difficult. It is not without its challenges. And the fact of uh, the matter is that you can be hurt, hurt so much that it can feel as though you'll never recover. That can happen emotionally to us. That can happen physically to us. But by learning to trust God and depend on Him, you can direct your life to discover sometimes strength and courage that you never know you had, but God supplies your need. Trusting in God means associating with God's people. That's why we worship together on Sunday. Not only that we might reconnect our companionship with the Lord, but that we also would reconnect our companionship with one another. Once we put our faith in God and in Christ, then faith must be kept fresh and alive. Albert Schweitzer once said, the only persons in this world who are truly happy are those persons who have learned to serve, serving, providing, going the extra mile for others. Give us the opportunity, as Paul was saying to Timothy, to get a hold on life the way it should be lived. And it can be done through no other way than by serving others and not just keeping to yourself. Jesus told a parable of the Good Samaritan. It was an answer to the question, who is my neighbor? And each of us, as we think about that question and our response to it, maybe we think of a person that we know, a person who is in need. A man in Bainbridge, Georgia, was able to understand that principle in a new way. This man in Bainbridge, Georgia, was out working in his yard. And he heard a young boy screaming. The boy was actually 11 years old. And so he ran across the yards to try and get to the boy. But when he got there, there was an intruder with a gun in his hand. And the man tried to make his way to the young boy to try and give him comfort. And as he did that, the intruder turned and fired and shot him in the legs and shot him in the chest. And so what happened afterwards was that the man actually recovered it was a long process, but he was able to walk again. And then he was asked the question, if you were called on to do the same action that you concluded, would you be willing to do it again? Would you be willing to risk yourself? And he said, yes, I would do it again. He said, our neighbor is the next person we meet. I love that line. Our neighbor is the next person we meet. No theories, no experts, just the next person that we meet. 
So if you want a life that is full, a life that has a hold on life itself, a life that satisfies, then don't look for the brass rings because they merely feared away. You and I must live for Christ and serve him at all times. That's how you come to understand the love of Christ in your life. Paul's admonition to Timothy was simply this. Note verse 11. But you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from all those evil things, pursue righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and godliness. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have continuously confessed well before our, my witnesses. In short, what Paul is telling Timothy is, if you want to get hold of life, if you want to have, so to speak, the brass ring, well then do it by living authentically. Do it by living without being artificial. Listen, there is a difference between a homemade cake and a store-bought cake. There's a difference between a tiger that is real and a tiger that is simply stuffed with materials. There is a difference between the person who checks in with God periodically and the person who walks with God each and every day. A man was telling his friend about the time when the world had become so corrupt and so immoral that people had become degenerate and conditions were so intolerable that St. Peter was <clears throat> alarmed. In talking things over with the Archangel Gabriel, Peter suggested that maybe what we should do is send another flood to the earth and start anew. Or maybe what we should do is let them use their nuclear weapons and kind of cancel themselves out with nuclear bombs. Gabriel admitted that this might be necessary. But he did suggest, according to your own statement, Peter, only about 70% of the population are unregenerate, sinners. 30% are righteous and are trying to improve conditions. So since 30% are righteous and since they are right in the thick of it in terms of the world in which they live right now, they may have some ideas that we haven't thought of. And so why don't you, Peter, write a letter to them and see what suggestions they may have? Peter agreed that this was a good idea. And so he composed a letter that he sent to the 30% who were righteous. In telling his story, the man asked his listener, what do you think St. Peter said in his letter? After a moment's hesitation, the friend admitted, I don't know. What did he write? Oh, said the man, you didn't get a letter. The proof is we don't play Russian roulette with God. We don't take chances in terms of something as important as where we will spend eternity. And so if you've just been chasing the brass ring and finding that you keep coming up empty, take the suggestions that Paul gave to Timothy. And that is make a solid connection with your heavenly father through faith in Jesus Christ. And then help others, because in helping others, you will literally be helping yourself. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, there are good life lessons for us to learn from this portion of your scripture today. That when we are looking for meaning in life, we find it most at the feet of the cross, rather than in our own strength and in our own wisdom. And so we ask, O oh Lord, that we would be people who not only connect with God in Christ, but then take that connection to such a point as we help others so that they might also see the love of Christ in what we say and in what we do. Let us join together in sharing a prayer that is powerful, a prayer that speaks to each one of us as well as speaks to us as the body of Christ. And so let us share together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen.
And now may uh, the Lord be very close to you this week. May you find in him the resource that you need for daily living. May you experience his love in such a way that it spills over onto others so that you might be a living witness for the Christ that you love. Amen.